Okay, everybody. So we are very lucky to have one of our own members joining us tonight. Um, Mirna, how, how long have you been with our, our chapter now, Mirna? Uh, just over a year. Just I'm, over a year. And I remember when you yeah. joined, uh, I was just so blown away by the artwork you do. Um, Mirna's going to be showing us how she builds her art out of cloths, shapes, and blended pastels. Uh, and if you, we sent out the link today, be sure to check out her website. Uh, I just love your, your fruit, Mirna. They're, they're, it's just, oh, good. <laughs> it's so crisp and, and just the, the light. It's just amazing what you do. So uh, we're so thrilled to have you. I'm so excited to learn uh, the techniques you use and uh, I'll hand it over to you. Welcome. Okay, here we go. All right, so I'll start. Um, my process started with using fabrics and photography. Uh, the, the big thing for me is having the right photograph or the right vision to create the work as most people do. Um, so I will show you. I start off with making basic colors through fabric paint and I'll show you. I have a store of fabrics that I use that I've previously painted with fabric paint and many colors, many, many colors, many colors. So they end up being lots of resource. If I don't have a color for the work that I want to do, I have to do one. I have to make another color. And Myrna, is that basically like a, a cotton cloth material? It is cotton. It is cotton that I have. So that's the back end. If you use fabric paint, it's painted. And what it does, what the fabric paint does, and it's just, just plain cotton. And I start out with white. And what it does is that it closes the weave. The paint actually closes the weave. It's sort of like what gesso does to a canvas um, so that the, the pastel uh, sits on it but gets absorbed at the same time. So when you're using a pastel, uh, you can use one color and then another color and then another color and use your cloth to, I'll show you that. Um, to blend them all together. And it won't, it, it kind of sits there, but it gets, it's hard to explain. You have to utilize the materials to really understand what they feel like. And I developed this because I have carpal tunnel and I, and I can use my fingers, but I can't hang on to a paintbrush. Not for, ver for long periods of time. And I, do spend long periods of time doing this. So, um, so, so how that, do you paint? How do you paint the cloth without a paintbrush? Oh, I use a big brush. It's just a, a big brush. It's just like a paintbrush. You're painting mm. the cloth with some. I'll show you the paint itself. And I start off with basic colors like yellow, blue, and red, you know, to make your, so it's, it's jacquard textile paint. And you can get them at Opus. You can get larger ones either online or from Vancouver. So it's, it's, yeah, <laughs> it's well used. So you use that to paint over white cloth to get a basic, color. And then once you have a basic color from the photograph that you want to use, then you then what you do is I've taken a photograph that I've taken and I grid it out and I produce a shape that I want to put 
on my base cloth. I always use a black base cloth. I'll show you in a second. I'll just show you this. And this I've cut out from, from this. And on the back of this, this, which adheres to the base cloth, is this. It is a bond, a heat bond ultra. You can get, it's a fabric um, sewing thing. It is, I don't know if you can see it. It is sticky, it, it melts with an iron. So it's sticky on this side and it's paper backed on this side. So both sides are sticky. So I take my shape, I I trace it onto this, I cut it out, and I end up with this that has the shiny to be attached to the base cloth, whatever that is, whatever you decide to use. And my mo more complicated um, pictures, like the lemons you were talking about, is a very um, involved process because there's many different kinds of cutouts that are used. So I will now, now that you've seen this. So these are available through either Opus or through Vancouver, or I think maybe even Amazon. Opus here doesn't really have a large selection of these at all. Uh, they're very small, very, very small bottles. The pastels I use are available through Opus. Uh, sometimes I buy them online because Opus doesn't open. They're Pentel fab, uh, pastels and they're little guys, but they are nice and soft and you break them, you can break them to make a, a, an edge to do your fine lines. Anyway, I will show you some of that too. And those are the oil pastels, correct? Yes, yes. Yeah. So I will turn my camera around and show you what I'm doing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If I can find it. Oh, here we go. I just had to turn my machine around. All right. So there's my piece. There's my black cloth. And I have my iron ready to iron on my piece. And what I've also done is I have, this is a six by six I'm doing. So this, the pieces I use my, my reference here. So this goes up here. This comes down here. Bruna is the black cotton. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And I've just gave myself some reference marks as to where the edges are. And I have these little pieces. As you can see, I take off the backing. So Myrna, is that the black? Is that just quilters cotton that was already black or did you dye that black? No, it's plain. No, it's plain black. It's hard to dye cotton black. black right. Black. So this piece goes there. So they have a they have a paper backing. So when I cut when you cut it out, it has to be backwards. Hmm, took me a while to figure that out. It has to be backwards. So that when you have your image, when you have your piece, it is the right way round. When they're small pieces, it's difficult. So 
sorry, it's not usually this finicky. It can be finicky depending on how technical you want to make your piece. So there's that. I guess I better take the paper off this one. It's amazing stuff, this uh, bond stuff. Where would you get that stuff? Is that just like from Fabricland or something? Yep, yep. And this piece. goes there. So then I take an iron, which has been heated. And first I just kind of make sure nothing's going to shift. And then I use, the big thing about using pastels, oil pastels, is that you use cloth on cloth to blend. So I just do this. So that's to melt the glue on the bottom of the pieces, eh? Exactly. Yep. It adheres to the bottom, your bottom, and you have to have a bottom sheet. Yeah. No matter how big, uh, no matter how big you're doing things. I'll show you something else I'm working on. But no matter how big you're doing stuff, you have to have the bottom. Otherwise, things just fly around all over the place. You have to have a stable surface. Yeah, something for it to adhere to. Yeah. I'm probably well, jumping ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. probably jumping ahead a little bit here, but what do you how do you um do you mount it on something after you're finished the works to to put it into a frame or I mount it on oh there's a here's a flower that I've done earlier. Um it's mounted on a canvas. Oh, okay. So you just stretch it over and staple it onto the canvas. Exactly. Oh neat. That's what I was going to ask too. <laughs> We're always thinking five steps ahead, eh? Just let Berna <laughs> do her thing. Okay, so this is the last piece. And I'll leave the last piece because I'm going to be using black in the middle for the, you can see for this. So it's, best to use the black first. So now what I like to do is work from the inside out because as you're working, you don't want to be sitting on your work and working this way because it'll smudge it'll get smudgy. You can do a piece and cover it. So your hands are not over the material all the time and messing up what you're doing. Anyway, that's what I do. So, okay, we've got this I'm looking at. So I will work from the inside. So I'll do the black, which I've already, as you can see, I've already lined out because it would be, I'd be here forever. <laughs> so what you can also do is you can, with your cloth, and there's, I, I go through lots of cloth, so I buy old sheets to just cut them up just to use as a as the material for blending. So I'm putting black on the cloth. And 
And then I will go in. It's always cloth on cloth. Oh, so you don't put the pastel directly on the... Yes, of course, sometimes, sometimes I do. It depends on what I'm doing. So, Myrna, this technique, did you develop this whole technique yourself or did you see it? Yep. Or... yep. No, I developed it myself. Huh. I'm so surprised that that doesn't drive your hands crazy if you can't hold a little brush. But I'm not, be... the thing is, I'm not hanging on to anything. Yeah. What I'm doing is I'm pushing it with my fingers. I'm not, okay. I'm not gripping any. Yeah. Yeah. So it makes a big difference to me anyway. Because I can work for hours using this, but I cannot hold a brush. So do you ever use anything other than your finger? Like a Q-tip or a, a, a blending tool or anything? Sometimes I might use something with a flat edge to get like a fine line outline, but no, not really. I've, I don't have any blending materials other than my hands. Because I find I have more control with my fingers than I would with a tool. And it comes from practice, right? I've been doing this now for um almost close to 15 years really this method so interesting it's a unique uh form of mark making eh mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. very direct very i have to say we were all studying your little panels when they came in Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, I started out doing flowers and I branched out from there, but flowers are very nice to deal with in subject matter, as you know. But then I got more complicated and I'll show you some other stuff. So you can make it as black as you as you need to. It's important to kind of stay with because it's black within the realm that you want to be working. Like you don't want to just get messy and because it's hard to recover to cover over black. Yeah, yeah. I just have a question with regard to your fabric that you're like that red fabric that you painted. Uh -huh. When you paint it, do you have to paint both sides or does the paint no. seep through? No, just the one okay. side because you only use the one side. Right. Okay. And then how, do, where do you lay it out and how big a pieces are you painting at a time? Um, I lay it out on my floor <laughs> wherever I can find space. And I use a, an old shower curtain or something to put it on top of. And um, I mix up my paints in, or my fabric color in uh, just any kind of disposable, it does not be disposable, but I, I have little, little plastic dishes that I use to mix it up. And okay. um, yeah. And then you paint right out to the edge. Pretty much, because I don't, because I keep the materials. As you see, I've got a, a big stock of materials and sometimes I only need a little piece. So right. it's good to have the extra. Right, so are you working in half meter segments or? 
meter segments or how, what size are you working on when you're dyeing it? Hmm. That's a good question. It's depends on the piece. This one is, I see I've cut out some. So I mix colors as well. And I actually do some things like, um, sometimes the surface is not, this is from Victoria. Sometimes I use salt. Oh. So I've got a mottled kind of effect. Right, okay. Or you can you can kind of scrunch it up or whatever, or use water to spray on it. Right. Make, you know, and you can blend your colors. You can have more than one color at a time that you're putting on a piece of cloth. So you can just, it, and sometimes I'll want to use this piece, right? That is both purple and blue. So, yeah. It's fun just, just working with material. White material, right. you're putting color on. Right. Do you ever use unbleached cotton or do you always use the, the bleached white? Oh no, you can use unbleached. You can use, you can use any kind of cotton. Anything that has that kind of weave. And okay. white is the best because you're changing the color, right? Right. Okay. Thanks. So I'm not going to be too exact tonight because it's as you can see, you can you can manipulate your edges. When you are done, do you spray a fixative on it? Only at the end. But a, a normal fixative, like you would do on a, an acrylic or, or an oil painting, or, yeah. or is there something it, specific you use? No, I use a fixative, but only at the end, when I'm done. Mm -hmm. When I'm done and it's on, already mounted on the canvas. OK. Okay, so that's the center. Now this is this is pretty rough, you guys. It's because I spend a long time putting the edges on and everything else. So this is basically how this works. Does the oil pastel not melt onto your iron now? It would if I let it. Because <laughs> this, this piece of material doesn't have oil on it, right? Right. So you're being pretty careful with the tip of your iron there. Yes. When I've done things like with the lemons, and here's lemon number one, not the one that got the award, but the first one. A little it's lower? A... Yeah. Can you see it? Uh, we can see the lower half of it. Can see the lower half. Okay. If you put it flat on the surface of your table, oh, okay. I think that would probably give us the best view. Okay. So with this. Oh yeah. There we go. With this, there are. This is a piece. These are all separate pieces. These are separate pieces, and this is a separate piece. And this material here is a um, very porous kind of material. So it gives a, the illusion of glass. And these are of the same material 
only they are pieces cut out and put on carefully because because they're poor because it's porous it the iron doesn't like it much so the way you solve that bad information problem by the way oh, pardon no it's okay uh, somebody came in that wasn't muted oh okay um so to do the layering on this it's challenging because these are our little pieces of this porous material that the iron doesn't like. So they go on carefully, very carefully. <laughs> <laughs> and these and these are the cotton that were yellow and use the shading and they're over a white piece that was used oil pastels. This was totally white, this piece. These were yellow, and these of course are yellow. Um, and this is blue. So it's it's a process. It really is a process. It's not one thing or another. It's a combination of a whole bunch of things. To do these, I mean what happens sometimes is with the oil pastels, you'll be working with them and all of a sudden you'll say, oh, my goodness, it works. <laughs> because you have, you have to keep working at it. It doesn't happen automatically like with paint. You, and sometimes it's the tooth of the material that helps it happen. So what kind of uh, fixative do you actually use on there? Is it like a spray fixative or do you? Yep, yep, but only at spray. the end. Don't, because you're, you're manipulating the color all the time until that point. Right. right? No, so it's just a spray fixative. Like the yeah. normal one that you would use for drawing, charcoal drawings or pastels or? Yep, yep, I'll show you. It's just regular fixative, right? Workable fixative. Hmm. So once you spray that on, the, then the pastels won't smudge anymore at all? Well, with oil, you see, it dries, right? It, it does end up drying. Oh, right. Right? So That's chalk pastels. Right. So mm -hmm. these, I mean, Mm. Right? Because it's all dry. Yeah. And so Helping could you take a damp right? cloth and wipe that if it was yep. dirty? Could you take yep. a damp cloth and wipe it down? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. 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 Interesting. And this is this is sort of another one I've I've done a, a while ago. So this is these are all separate pieces. And the background was a reflection of through a window. And these are drawn on these parts here. So there's no material here that was difficult to work with. This was white that I started off as a background, white, white on my black, because my you always have my black that I put everything on to begin with. And then these are put on individually the apples and then colored and then the reflection was drawn on the white with the pastels wow and, and that's you just keep blending in the colors you keep blending in the colors and you use as many colors as you can kind of see and it just is magic. <laughs> it just starts to work. Those apples are amazing. Mm -hmm. This is a really recent one that I did with the um, with lemon slices. And this again uses the this porous material as a reflection. 
But this was this, everything on the background was this material, which is not easy to work with. But all of the, I mean, this is all, it's just oil pastels, right? And you just work in the colors using your cloth. It, it's the photograph that gives you the, hmm, the source, I guess, of where you're going. Yeah. All Verna, the... can I just ask you about when you say porous uh, mm -hmm. fabric, do you mean, so it's not cotton? It's something else? What I don't understand what you mean by porous. When I used the, when I did the reflection on glass, I used like a, a material that wasn't cloth or wasn't cotton. It was like a sheer material, like a sheer. Oh, okay. All right. And I painted that. And then I painted that. And then I had to put the backing on, which is the bond stuff, which seeps through. Yeah. Right? Uh, right. It, of course. It was, it was very tricky. Very tricky right. and, and messy, messy, messy. So it was not. Uh, and how do you stretch the, 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 the cloth that you are working on? So do you stretch it afterwards or do you start yes. with a stretched one? There you go. Okay, so is it? Did you mount that on a on a stretched uh, canvas or? Um... Yes, yes, I mounted oh. it on on a canvas already prepared. Okay, all right. Did you use that uh, adhesive? Uh, the same thing for the canvas. For the canvas. Yeah, no. the 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 roll of adhesive film that you're using. Did you uh, mount it with that? No. I mounted it by stretching it on. Okay. As you can see, this is okay. The, the cloth. All right. Thanks. Does the painting of that cloth keep it from fraying at the edges? Because I noticed the back doesn't look like it's frayed at all. Well, it depends on the. It depends on. Yeah, it does. It does. It keeps it from fraying because it's already been. The weave has been closed from the fabric paint. Right. And so it doesn't fray like you would not, like the black underneath would does fray, but the one over top doesn't. So you're saying there's a black fabric under and you've adhered the white fabric to the black fabric? Is not that right? This, not on this one. This one, I, I used white. Okay. Because the it's a white background, a light background. Gotcha. Okay. Thank I'll you. Offer, and, and it's a porous. This one's porous, so I don't. But um, like this one of my granddaughter, it, it is black. That's the black material that's the finished edge this one is going to New Zealand so it's all a finished edge that I've put on and I choose what I want for the background all of these all the leaves are separate little pieces this was not the original background so I don't know if you can see that's a, that. That's a lot of little pieces. It's a lot of little pieces and it takes a lot of time. But it's fun to do because you think, oh, well, that works. Let's just keep going. So, yeah. So even those little tiny pieces you're saying, they'll adhere going around the corner, around the edge of the fabric. They'll stay stuck on there? Yep. Wow, that's amazing. Yep. And you don't get any ed little pieces coming off. They all bond to that. They all they all bond. Okay. They all bond. Yep. Wow. Thanks. Okay. 
So let's get back to this one a little bit. So we've got some gray happening or I'm going to leave this for now. I can actually do this one. So this one, It helps to have lots of colors at your <laughs> fingertips. I've worked in the uh, chalk pastels and I've accumulated quite a, yeah. quite a pile of those. I know what it's like. It, it looks as though you can get more values with that because you're working on top of a colored fabric. You're already, um, you, ha you have a better range than you do with the chalk pastels on paper. Well, I haven't ever used the chalk. I've, I just fell in love with the oil. Yeah. Because it's so, so much fun, really. And you can, if you don't like the color that has happened, you can, just like a, acrylic paint, you can cover it up and adjust it and do something else. Sometimes you have to put white over it so that the other color disappears that you didn't want. <laughs> it's time consuming, this process. I'll warn you right now. <laughs> It's very time consuming. It's fun, but it's very time consuming. How does your uh, painting, uh, finished artwork, look so flat? Like, um, I can't see the, the, the layers of fabric. They're not, how do you, you know, do you cover them in some kind of uh, glue? Nope. They no. start off exactly like this that's where they are if you look on the side yeah. of my work you can see all the little pieces and there's no fraying ever sorry no there's no, no fraying that adhesive is really holding them yeah. Oh. yeah so would would there end up being oil pastel on on just about all parts of the of the image there other than your black background when you're done? On this one, it will be black on the outside. Just yeah. Like. Yeah, so the other ones, yes, I I branched out and wanted to do a whole picture, right? Mm -hmm. um, okay, I'll give you an example. I'll show you what I have been working on. And it's, it's a lot more complicated. It's a picture of my, another picture of my granddaughter in New Zealand. And it's big.
that's what I've been doing today. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. And it is complicated in that if you're working on something big that is the whole picture, you want to cover up what you've done so that you don't put another color where you don't want it. Don't contaminate it. Right, right. Because it's easy to do, really easy to do because your hands get dirty and you, you know, but that's, and it's all about blending and it's really, um, yeah, you just have to play with it yourself. It's really, it's a very interesting pro process. Can you compare, uh, have you used the oil pastels on paper? Can you compare the difference between using it on cloth and using it on paper? I haven't ever used paper. Oh. Uh, because I know, well, for one thing, it tears because I am pushing the oil into the cloth with the other piece of cloth, right? Right. So I'm doing this with it constantly. Paper would not withstand. No, it would, start, it would start to peel up for sure. Well, it would tear. Yeah. As, yeah. Right? So, yeah. So that's basically what I do is, do you want to see me do more of the flowers? I want to know how you get the mess off if you mess up. Oh, well, <laughs> you, go over it, you go over it with a different color, right? Like, say. So you just have, so if you smudged her arm. Yeah. By accident, what yeah. would you do? How would you fix that? Well, depending on the color I'd smudge it with, but you would, again, take the color that you use to color the arm which is something like this, you would cover that. If that didn't work, you'd use white. Okay. And, then, and then you you'd kind of kind of push that in. And if and then you use this over top, but you have to be very careful because it'll build up and it won't look the same as the surrounding area. Mm -hmm. So, so sometimes you can use an eraser depending on how thick the, the oil is or the color is. So on that one that you have in front of you, she yeah. has little, very precise eyes and a very precise mouth. Is this yeah. where you, you'd break it and just use the edge of your yeah. pastel? Huh? Yes. Yes. Wow. Because that's so you end up with an with an edge. Oh, this is a better one. You end up with a sharp edge, and it's easy to use that as a sharp edge. Myrna, just a question: Do you ever uh, <laughs> scrape back into? some of the pastel that you've worked on like to for a different kind of mark not necessarily no no i don't okay. no i don't but you could try you could try yeah. doing that but it's it would it depends on what you want depends on what effect you want um i have been toying with the idea of doing some abstract kind of thing with that in mind of actually scraping it and doing some other mark making things with it yeah i could see that'd be really interesting mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so yeah so that's what i've been working on for hours and hours <laughs> <laughs> labor that, of love yes yes but this is a big piece that i had to i had to actually paint the color blue because i didn't have the blue that I wanted mm -hmm. and the size that I wanted. So I had to paint this first before I started this. Oh, 
And this is the photograph. Of Madeline. So it doesn't end up end up exactly, of course, but it's it's just really, I mean, the subject matter is close to my heart, so. <laughs> so around this interior area, you see that there's a shadow there, right? Mm -hmm. So I will do some of that. I'll use what I've already done with my cloth, but do it lightly. Hope I have it in the right direction. It's the problem with square paintings, eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> get rotated. And the more you work it, the more exact you can make it. So this doesn't end up being there. This is, this is the edge of the flower. So those little panels <laughs> that you turned in for, share the sunshine it looked like yeah. each petal of the flower was a separate piece well Do you... in the, uh, no the, the the one with the the light colored one the yellow oh the smaller yellow. one yeah yeah it had separate little pieces that i cut okay. out for that just like this on this one On this one, these are all little pieces that I've cut out and ironed on. And, and all of those are little, little pieces. They were so much fun. <laughs> Cause they, they, you can bend them and you can twist them and whatever, and just use your iron to put them down, right? So do you have a lot of overlap on that or is it done more like a mosaic where the pieces butt up to each other? They're mostly uh, a mosaic where they butt up to each other. Okay. Um, this is an overlap because uh, this is an, an over overlap. This is right on top because it's the middle of the flower. And these are, yeah, all of these are, are yeah, they're, they butt up. They butt up against the, the edges, right? Sometimes if you, if you, if you actually get a piece that's a little bit too long, you can either cut it or you can kind of slip it underneath, but then you've got an edge underneath here that you have to deal with, right? That is going to show up. A lump. A lump, well, an edge, you'll, you'll see the line. So you have to be able to deal with that if that's what you do. So. So I will, you can always use an eraser. Actually an eraser works on the oil pastels. Hmm. Most. And I use, and I use this because your, your hand can actually smudge stuff. So I will put on, I'll do some white.
just because white is 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 a prominent color and you don't really want to have to color over it too much or you don't want to can be quite forgiving. To a point. Is it best to build up some of the um, oil pastel along the edges of where those seams are? Does that help fill in that little edge or do you worry about that? No, I, it doesn't help. And it, it sometimes is a hindrance. Okay, good to know. All you have to do is break it to get the edge, right?
Have you ever tried working uh, with oil painting sticks, like uh, instead of the oil pastels? Uh, no, I haven't tried that. Then again, I'd be working on canvas, right? Well, I think, yeah, the same thing. I think you could do the same thing. Well, yeah, perhaps. I might give that a try. I do, I do have a preference <laughs> to, my, to my oil pastels, I must admit. Can you hold it up for us to see your progress a bit better? Hmm. Oh. Cool. Thank you. So you. You just keep working at it, basically. <clears throat> Highlights and shadows, different Light shades. Shadows, yep. And have you maybe tried those uh, hot plates that they're using to work with uh, wax paint? Sorry? Have you tried those uh, maybe hot plates, some kind of a plate that they use for working with wax paints? I've never heard of them. The, the encaustic yeah. paints. I think, yeah, I think the smart. only place where Myrna is using heat is just to adhere the fabric. So a hot plate probably wouldn't uh, work that well. But it would melt the pastel, so they would be more creamy. Oh, I don't want them to be more creamy. I don't oh. think. No, they are, they are the consistency that I find works just fine. Um, I don't want them to be more softer. Softer, no, because mm -hmm. I've, they're soft enough the way they are. And those are the um, Dewart ones. Is that what was the brand of the oil pastels? Um, they are Pentel. Pentel, that's right. Pentel. You can get them at Opus. Um, I used to get mine in Thailand. Yes. And you have to be careful that you that your claws remain workable, but won't contaminate other colors. Like I've got, I go through lots of cloth. So Myrna, can you cover some of that black cloth with white and it will 
it won't show the black through? Will the pastel not show through? Or I mean the cloth not show through the white pastel? I use it as an anchor, right? Okay. Um, sure, I could, I could, I'll do it on the corner here. I just noticed in the picture, there's a, a little, oh yeah, it does cover quite well. There, mm -hmm. it's, I'm just looking at the photo um, on one bottom part of the, yeah, there's a little bit of white out, outside the petal there, it looks like. Well, that'll come when I do the, the leaf. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yeah, you can, you can do that, but you're, it's not stable to work with. The black, just on the black. It's better, it to as, have, better to have the extra layer of fabric. It's, yeah, it's an anchor for this to be ad adhered to. So, so, so if you were going yeah. to do m more, like not just have a black background, I'm sorry, I'm not making myself clear. Are, are you planning to leave the background of this, this piece uh, black then? Yes. Okay. And if you weren't, then you would have adhered more fabric. I would, I would have had a, um, a, a background first mm -hmm. and then put the pieces on top. Mm -hmm. um, right? Gotcha. Um, Myrna, I've got two questions. One, I'm intrigued yeah. about you getting oil pastels from Thailand. What's that all about? <laughs> oh. Because that, that's where I first started doing it because I was on holiday there and uh, we were in a village and um, yeah, I needed something to do, right? Right. And it was portable, very portable. I could get material there and uh, yeah. Okay. And obviously your drawing skills are superior, I would say. So is that something you've done all the time is drawn? Um, I've done draw, well, I used to do a lot of drawing as, as a growing up. Uh, my, I used to draw my cousins when they come for a visit and whatever. Um, not necessarily. Um, I do the grid thing, right? That right. helps a lot. Yeah. Um, to get the basic. And then I just start doing, doing. And yeah. You can get very fine lines with a broken piece. I haven't used pastels before, but when you when they those pieces get really small, can you keep using them right until the end, or do you have to toss the little bits? Here's one. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> wow. I, I use it for um, for very fine lines because you can use it. It's hard to hang on to sometimes, but you can get because it has a nice edge to it. You can get things like that. Okay, so you can basically use it all up. Yep. The thing to remember is that you can just keep working the colors. It's not like mixing your acrylic to get your color. I have to layer it and layer it and layer it. 
to make it work. And when it does work, it really works. So you can get the, the fine edge and then you, or pretty fine edge, and then you can just use your I don't ever use tools much. I find my fingers are my fingernails actually work. And I can control oh. it. Um, Myrna, we just lost the visual from your iPad. Uh, oh. your, your screen, your iPad might have just timed out because we haven't had any activity on it. Oh, OK. Wiggle your finger on it and it'll come back. Come on, come on. Oh, there, we there we go. I'll have to plug it in just a second. This is going longer than I was anticipating. <laughs> so. There we go. So this really just gives you an idea of what happens. Normally I wouldn't work this quickly. The whole process looks quite meditative. Yeah, it takes a while and you, I get involved. I, I look up and I, my goodness, it's been three hours that I've been here. And uh, yeah. So that gives you an idea. I don't know if you want me to keep going, but. I will in a bit. 
I'll show you. So I'll do this white bit at the, at the bottom. I don't know if oil stick you can move around like I'm doing with this. Does anybody have any experience with that? The only thing I can say is oil sticks to me are um what I'd call creamier, like these are, these are a little firmer that you're using. Right. And I think uh, the oil sticks I've used are, um, I don't know, just creamier. And so I'm not sure it would work as well because I think you need that. I think it would smudge more easily. Let me put it that way. Right. So that's just an indication there. I mean, I, I, I work at it and I work at it, basically. You'll have to make sure that you post the finished picture somewhere, Myrna. All right. Because I'm anxious to see how it all turns out. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it, uh, if you um, uh, if you'd like to send uh, uh, me a, a, an image of that when when you're done, whenever you are done, no rush, and I'll uh, I'll get it out to the members and attach it to the uh, the video. Okay, and that'd be that'd be really that's real always really interesting to see because you know there's only so much time during a. Uh, demonstration to work on things it's always interesting to see the finished piece when somebody's gotten done with it so that gives you an idea of how it works yeah and um yeah it's just a matter of working it looking at what your what your image is and what it does and putting together something that kind of resembles it. I don't always completely follow, as, as you know, <laughs> as most artists do. But you can make the edges pretty crisp by just cleaning it up. You see the end, the difference? So you're actually painting right on the fabric with that uh, oil stick then? Yep. Yep, yep, yep. So now the oil, the oil pastel will dry. It, do you have any kind of time limit where you need to get back to a, a piece to be able to keep 
blending it? Like, is there a... No, not really. You can, you have, you can work into it? Yeah, you have to be careful um, about where you're working. Like if I'm, if I'm finished with this part, I want to cover it. If I'm doing the leaves, then they're out of the way. But if I'm just doing the leaves and I'm, and I'm finished with the flower, the base of the flower, then I want to cover it. So I will put another piece of cloth on there so that when I'm, when my hand is working, I'm not disturbing what's already there. Yeah. Right? And that seems to work for me. Myrna, so can I see your hands? Because if I was doing this, I would be black <laughs> to the elbows. Look at that. Oh, no. Oh, no. my gosh. It doesn't look like the... Um... Uh, the oil pastel comes off on your hands the way that regular, like the soft pastel does. Oh, yes, it does. Oh, yes, it does. If I, on the blue one that I showed you of, of Madeline, I have to really be careful because I have to be careful of what I'm wearing because mm -hmm. my arms are on it. It, I get blue for some odd reason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And yeah, no, my hands get, if I'm, especially if I'm using a particular color, like a dark color, yes, my hands will be, I have scrub brushes all over the place in my bag <laughs> because they're needed. But that gives you an idea. Cool. And that's, that's just the start. As I said, that is just the start. There's a lot to go, but um, anyway, gives you an idea of what I do. So Myrna, can you reuse those cloths? Like, do you wash them or do you toss them once they've been covered in the pastel? No, no. Yeah, no, no, they, they go out, 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 out. Because I don't think it would ever, because it's oil. Right. And it's really, really, because I really press in quite a bit. And right. No, no, I toss them. Okay. And when, yeah, because they, they can get pretty grotty. <laughs> because, because I, you know, I use a little space here and a little space there. And I, you have to really be careful um, when your claws get used a lot because you might be on one side and on the other side, there's a whole bunch of color that you didn't want. <laughs> yeah. And you have to do some repair work. So, yeah. yeah. How's that? That was good. amazing. <laughs> yeah, very informative. Thank, Thank you so much. Yeah. I'm so Does glad anyone we else got have to any, see it. any questions at all? Marina, how long will it take you to finish this particular piece, do you think? Um, I would say it would take me hmm, a week. Wow. Wow. And this is a small piece. I've been working on the one of Madeline for a month now. Um, wow. So what, yeah. What's the biggest size you've done? Um, what's the biggest size I've done? The biggest size I've done would have been the, mm, the tulips that I did. Do you remember the tulips? They were in a show. And uh, also the my canned pears. Mm. Do you remember my canned it's pears? You, how, how big are I we do. talking about? Because some of our members might not have seen those. Okay. Um, I think the tulips are 36 by 36. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. That's big. 24 or something like that. Yeah, no, it's big. It's big. So if, it's the whole table, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But this is how I started. I started doing flowers on black and it was just, I just kept going basically. So if you are working on a really large piece, do you start in the center and then work out? Is that the best way to do it? Or do you start on one end and? Depends on the piece. 
depends on what it is. I did a big one in Thailand that was like five feet by three and a half feet. Wow. It, was, it was a flower, but I, <clears throat> I did it in sections. So I did it because I didn't have a big enough table. So I put tables together and whatever. So I did a section. I have a section revealed and do that, cover that up, do another section, mm -hmm. and then do another section. I never saw the whole thing until it was finished. <laughs> wow. And it turned out pretty well. It was pretty amazing. Yeah. So do you have a dedicated iron for this? Or do you uh, I don't iron anything else, so <laughs> I get it dedicated. <laughs> yeah, I don't do any other ironing. So yeah, so that's how it begins. Well, that's, that's really interesting. Fascinating. Really process. interesting. Yeah, fascinating process. Fascinating. Yeah. That's really neat. Yeah. It's really so neat and really, really different. Neat. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's special because it's innovative. It's um, yeah. yeah, really special. Amazing. Oh, thanks. Well, thank you so much, Myrna, for, for taking the time to to walk us through this. And, and uh, uh, yeah, I think we all learned something here for sure tonight. Mm -hmm. Any other last questions from anybody or? Mm. No? <laughs> well, I think we'll uh, we'll call it there. Thanks so much, everybody, for tuning in. And uh, be sure to join us next month for our Christmas party. Right. Mm -hmm. yes. six. Fun. right. So, Sounds good. Happy good painting for, for November thanks. here. And thanks again, Myrna. Thanks, oh, Myrna. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Big thanks. Thank you. <laughs>